Hey, how's it going? I'm Jacob from Thin Air 3D, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how anybody can quickly create their own set of chess pieces using Fusion 360. Um, this tutorial should be pretty easy for anybody to follow along with, whatever kind of experience level that you have. I'm going to try my hardest to t say out loud any kind of shortcuts or keyboard commands that I use. That way you don't get lost or anything. Um, if you, in case you're unaware, you can pick up a copy of Fusion 360 for free. Um, they have a hobby license that they give out at no charge. So just go to their website and find that and download it if you'd like to follow along with this. Um, we're going to be creating this chess set that you see on the screen. <clears throat> Um, it's a pretty basic chess set, but I like it for 3D printing because uh, we can print it with no supports and it's a great um, set for uh, a kind of beginner tutorial like this. Um, the other thing is that we use a, a certain command that I think will help you out with um, creating other types of models that have similar uh, geometries. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be, um, I'm going to be showing you how to import a reference image and then we're going to be creating a sketch on a plane based off of the reference image. And then we're going to be doing a revolve command to create the actual geometries. And then I will show you how to export for 3D printing in case you don't know how. Um, I'll include timestamps down in the description so you can kind of skip around if you need to. And I'll probably record another video just creating one of these pieces really quickly, um, just in case you want to get the quick gist of it. But this is going to serve as, I guess, the full tutorial, which still should be very quick. So we'll go ahead and, and jump into that. Um, by the way, if you want to go ahead and subscribe, then um, you'll be able to be made aware of any of those other videos that do come out. But let's jump into this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new design. So uh, this should be what it'll look like whenever you open Fusion 360. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is import our canvas for our reference image. Um, now what I did, I just went to Google and I looked for some chess sets that kind of had a basic geometry um, that would be good for this tutorial and something that I thought looked cool. Found this one, the Herman Ohm chess set. Uh, they, it seems to sell for a lot on Etsy and stuff, but it looks cool. So we're going to use that one. Um, so what we're going to do, I already have it on my computer. We're going to go up here and click on insert, and then we're going to insert canvas. Then we're going to go and find it on our computer and bring it in. Um, now, once you open it, it's going to ask you to select which plane you want to insert it on. I always insert it on the front plane because for printing uh, or for like exporting for printing, I have it set to where Z is up, um, which yours should be too. So once you click on that plane, left click, um, we're going to go ahead and left click OK. And then I'm going to go up here and left click on the front for the cube. That way we're oriented correctly. And then I'm going to use the mouse wheel to, to zoom in. Um, now, real quickly, in case you haven't used Fusion 360 too much, just some quick commands. If you want to change your view, you can go up here and click this view anywhere um, to change where your perspective on what you're doing. You can also click and hold and drag to move it around. Um, it, you know, this is easy if, or makes it easy if you have a trackpad. Um, but also, you can, if you click and hold your mouse wheel, then that will pan. Or if you hold shift and then click mouse wheel, then that will rotate your image. Um, so that's just like some qu a quick um, how to kind of orient yourself. But I'm going to keep it on the front view and pan down. So the first thing we need to do is calibrate this image and basically get it roughly the same size as what we're going to want to ex export and eventually print at. So I looked up on Google um, what size chess pieces are supposed to be. Um, I'll include this link down in the comments, but it said that the king is supposed to be about 9.5 centimeters. So um, we're going to use that. So what we do is go over to canvases, click this drop down, and then we're going to right click on the canvas we pulled in and we're going to left click on calibrate. Then we're going to zoom in a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to click towards the bottom of the king and then the very top of the king. And then it's going to pull out a dimension to your left. And you can see it's at like 7.8 millimeters right now. We want it at 95 millimeters. Um, so we're going to just punch in 95 and then press enter. And that's going to blow our image up. So we're going to zoom out. Now it should be calibrated. Um, this means that, you know, our king will, if you know, because roughly what we're going to do from here is we're going to be tracing um, for the most part these profiles and then extruding them out uh, using Revolve. So they should be about the size that we want them to be. Um, so let's go ahead and start. We'll jump into it. Uh, first thing we want to do is go up here and left click on create sketch. And then we're going to left click on this plane right here. Um, just telling it where we want to do our sketch. 
And the first thing we're going to do is focus on the king. So I'm going to kind of zoom in on it a little bit using uh, clicking on the mouse wheel to pan over. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do is create a center line because what we're doing for these sketches is we're only sketching half of the profile and then that's what we're going to come back afterwards and revolve it 360 degrees to create these shapes and that's why I kind of that's kind of why I chose this chess set but also it's just a cool technique for creating stuff with geometries like this so we're going to go up here and we're going to left click on line and then we're going to go down here and we're going to well actually I want to keep it full frame we want to get roughly the center and bottom of this chess piece so about right here and then I'm going to left click and then I'm going to come up here. You don't have to hold or anything. Just left click. I'm going to come up here. Ah, it's a little bit off, as you can see. I don't really like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Escape. And then I'm going to right click and drag up and hit Repeat Line. Um, that's just a quick way instead of having to go up here to click Line again. But I'm going to try to get it more centered. So let's see how this does. Okay, that looks good to me. Um, that's roughly center. It, it doesn't have to be perfect, like I said, but as close as we can get. So I'm going to go over here and click um, OK. Or another thing that you can do is just hit Escape. Um, because what it's wanting to do is for you to continue drawing around. But I like to draw from the bottom and work, work, work my way up. I don't know why. It's just a kind of a preference of mine. So um, pretty much we're going we're gonna to trace our way around the right side of this profile. And um, it's going to be a series of using lines and uh, arcs, specifically three-point arcs, um, and maybe some other stuff. Uh, but you know that that should be the gist of it. So we're going to left-click line, and then we're going to go down here. And we're going to left-click on the end of our existing line, um, and then we're going to drag it over to the right. One thing you want to be making sure of is you want to keep it perpendicular, um, or you know this line perfectly horizontal. And the way you can tell is you can see right here the little perpendicular sign. If it's not, it'll go away. But so will your angle will also change. But keep it perpendicular, and I'm going to drag it to about here, and then left click. You can see it still wants to, you know, keep drawing. So we're actually going to go along with it for this one. So we're going to go ahead and left click like right here. Now, um, after this, you know, it's continuing to want to draw. I'm going to hit escape to get rid of that. Now, I want to make this kind of curved, kind of like an arc. So we're going to go to create and then arc, three point arc. And the way it works is you, you click your start point, your end point, and then you kind of shape the arc and click a middle. So click the start, we're going to click the end point, and then we're going to kind of click a middle. Now, one thing I'm keeping in mind is this is for 3D printing. So I want this to kind of, you know, I obviously don't want to break the 45 degree rule. So um, I kind of have it visually, you know, the 45 degrees. But wait, one thing you can do is, you know, add a line and then you can draw it and you can see um, the, the degrees like right there. We're like right around 45 degrees right there. So this should be fine. It shouldn't have an issue printing, but you can kind of, or actually, Okay, let's just show you two quick things real quick. So it's got the, the length highlighted to change the angle to lock it into 45 degrees. You can press tab and then it'll go over the angle and then just type in 45. And that way you can move and it's locked in. Um, so one thing that we can do really quick is left click to make that line and then press escape. And then we can take this and click and hold and drag this up. Oops, sorry. Okay, click and hold and kind of drag this up and make sure that it's above that 45 degree line. Now if we want this to kind of fit our original shape a little bit better, what we can do is click this and drag it down a little bit and just kind of mold it um, and then get rid of this. Now like I said, it, we're not going for exactly perfect for the you know the shapes that are already there because we're doing this for 3D printing and we want, we want it to be nice easy prints. So let's continue tracing the shape. The shape. We're going to do another three point arc um, connecting this next piece. So let's do arc, three point arc, and then click the start point and then click the end point. I'm going to zoom in so it's not snapping where I don't want it to. And then we're going to click, we're going to find a center point we like, which that looks good to me. Um, now, unlike line, it doesn't continue wanting to try. It pretty much just goes ahead and places it. So for this next one, I want it to be a line. You can see we're still on three point arc. I'm going to hit escape and then I'm going to go up here and click line. And then I'm going to left click and then left click at the end 
and then hit escape. Now I want a three point arc again because you can see this profile is kind of curved. You can make it straight if you want, but I like the, the arc. I think it looks nice. So start point, end point, and then a little bit of an arc. And then I'm gonna make an arc to connect these. So start point, end point, and then center. Boom, we've got our first chess piece. We've got it traced out. Um, like I said before, uh, well, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and trace all, or, you know, we're going to do the profiles for all of these, and then we're actually going to extrude them and create them. Um, I should have the timestamps below, so if you want to skip to that part, if you, if you get the concept at this point, then you can do that. But I'm going to go through and trace the rest of them out right now. So let's get started on the queen. Um, we're going to hit line, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start and we're gonna start from the bottom and kind of just roughly get the center point, which that looks good to me. Hit that and then hit escape. And then I'll zoom in a little bit and then I'm gonna right click, bring up for repeat line. And then we're gonna draw this out, um, which actually here's something that I messed up on. Uh, I'm gonna hit control Z to undo that. One thing that you wanted, I wanna do is I wanna keep the bottoms of these aligned with one another. Um, so that way, you know, it's just kind of, it's an OCD thing. It doesn't really matter, I guess, in the end, but um, it helps out if you export them all at the same time. But what we want to do is I'm going to hit uh, repeat line again, and I'm just going to hover my mouse over this, and then I'm going to drag it out without clicking or anything, and you can see that dotted line, making sure it's lined up. That way we know um, they're in line with one another. And then I'm going to click, or now I'm going to create my line and... Um, and then we'll start tracing it out. That way everything just stays nice and lined up. Um, won't really matter too much for this design, but it's just good practice. Um, another side note, I'm not, if you're familiar with uh, Fusion 360, I'm not going into dimensioning or constraining right now because that can get a little bit complicated with more organic shapes like this where we're tracing. Um, I might have another tutorial that goes into um, that kind of stuff at another point, but not not for today because that uh, would make it not really a beginner's tutorial. So again, making sure that's perpendicular, I'm gonna pull it out, trace it to here. Now for this one, I just want um, one smooth arc going up. So let's go and I'm gonna go to three point arc. Um, and then I'm gonna click the start point, end point, and then kind of a middle zone, which again, keeping 3D printing in mind, you don't want it to be too harsh because you know it won't have fun up towards the top. But if you if you don't have it too crazy, then you won't have an issue. Um, and then we're gonna do another three point arc, start point, end point, kind of get it right there. Um, and then we're gonna get another one, start point, end point, right there. And then another one, start point, end point, there. Um, one thing real quick, uh, which I'm kinda, I like to try to clean this up a little bit. You can see this little corner right here where those arcs were, were combined. There's different ways to do all this, but one little trick that I like to do to smooth it out a little, sometimes it works, is to um, go up here and hit fill it. So left click on fill it, and then we're gonna left click on this little spot right here, and that'll kind of smooth it out for us a little bit. Um, and make it, you know, it doesn't matter so much right now, you can't see it, but later when we actually create the uh, design, then there would be a sharp line if we didn't kind of round that out a little, which you can actually up the, if you double double left click, you can change that. Let's see, 3.5, um, you can change it to four, just to whatever you think looks good. I'm not really that picky with it, but the queen looks good. So let's go ahead and move on to the bishop. Um, same process, we're gonna left click on line, we're gonna come down here, we're gonna make sure this is in line. We're gonna click roughly in the center of our piece and we're gonna bring it up to the top. Um, that looks fine to me. I'm gonna hit escape and then I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna do re right click, move up, left click, repeat line, left click, line, and drag it out to here. Um, now this one's got a slightly different profile than the other ones. Um, so I kinda like to make them unique in some way or another. It just makes it a little bit um, fun. So left click right here. Um, up a couple millimeters and then let's go out a few millimeters. One thing, you don't want to surpass 135 uh, or you don't want to go lower than 135 right here. Um, if you want it to be a perfect you know, 45 degree angle from the horizon, then you can just hit tab and then 135 um, and then left click. And then we can go back over here 
And I kind of like it to have it to be perpendicular and lined up. Um, so I'm going to left click right there again, and then I'm going to hit escape. Now I'm going to do an arc up to that. So left click and then three point arc. Um, but we're going to left click at the start, left click at the finish, and then create the profile, not make it too crazy. Um, so it prints just fine. And then we're going to hit escape. Um, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and do another three point arc. So right click, repeat three point arc, and I'm going to do start point, click at the finish point, and then somewhere in the middle. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and get up to the top. Now I want to show you one thing. Uh, you might, your first instinct might be to do just another three point arc, but I'll show you what it's going to end up kind of being a little bit too circular compared to the shape of a, a bishop. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to do a spline, which allows us to get a little bit more custom with it. Um, and I'm not going to go in depth with splines because, you know, you can really get crazy with them, but I'm just going to, you know, do it really quickly, um, just to get this basic shape. So we're going to go to create and then we're going to go to spline and we're going to do a fixed point spline, left click. And what we're going to do is just left click on this first point and we're just going to trace our way around. Now the harsher the curve, the more points, um, the straighter the line, the less points. So we're going to left click, come out here, I'm going to left click again, left click again. You can see it kind of molding to the curve, the shape, but now that it's flattening out, you can go a little bit further away and then and just left clicking along the way. And then once you get to the end, you can just hit OK. And then you've got your T-spline. Um, it looks a little bit crazy at first, but if you hit uh, Escape and then click somewhere else, it looks fairly normal. Um, and I may do a tutorial a little bit more on splines, but that does the trick for now. Um, you can play with it if you want, click those dots, but um, and just Control-Z to fix whatever you may have goofed. But let's go ahead and move on. Um, we can go ahead and do the night. Um, this one is going to be a little bit different than the other ones, but uh, you know, we'll just kind of jump into it and I'll show you what I mean. So uh, keeping this aligned with one another, we're going to drag it over. Make sure it doesn't pop up. You see how it hops up to that the first little edge. Um, make sure it's aligned with the bottom, truly, the bottom of this line. We're not worried about it being to the bottom of these pieces because the perspective of the photo. But um, let's go ahead and click this roughly center. Let's see where we're at. Um, that's not really center enough. I'm going to redo that. So I'm going to hit escape and then right click, repeat line, make sure it's lined up. And then maybe around here, the perspective of the photo, this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, I learned this from the last time I went through this, but um, go ahead and left click right there and then hit OK. Now for this one, I'm going to trace the left side. I actually should have traced the right side, the whole or the left side throughout just to keep it consistent, but it's not a big deal. It doesn't make a difference at all. So um, I'm going to left click here and bring it out. And then we're just going to keep this one fairly simple. I'm going to just bring an angle in a little bit, left click, press escape, and then we'll do a three point arc. Uh, so we're going to click the start point click a little bit higher because that's too harsh of an angle. So we're just going to kind of do it how we want to do it um, like that. And then actually and what I hit escape and then I'm going to grab this and drag it out just a hair, just a little bit longer because I want to make this, this a little bit more dramatic of a swoop, um, which actually, this looks a little bit more straight and not really necessarily a swoop like this. So we're going to do a straight line, um, but you can see it kind of goes like straight and then a different angle. So let's do two straight lines in a row. So, okay. So line and then left click, and then we're going to go to about right here. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then we're going to left click to about, where did I want to go? Um, Let's go here and this will make sense here in a second, but we're going to left click here and then hit okay. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to trace this arc. So three point arc and then left click, left click end point. Um, okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is trace out this face a little bit, and this will all make sense later on when we're actually creating the profile. Now, one thing, obviously for it to be 3d printing the whole 45 degree rule angle. So, um, I don't want to break that. So I'm going to make the shape a little bit different. Um, I'm going to just like kind of click there and then get onto this line 
And then I'm going to kind of... Actually, no, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to left click that and then hit delete to get rid of it. And then I'm going to right click. Oh, no, nope, I don't want to repeat delete. Um, left click on line. Sorry. Now I'm going to go from here and then I'm going to just bring it down there. And I'm actually going to hit tab 45 to make sure it's 45 degrees and then get it on the line there. Now we know that we can print that and then I'm just going to continue along the line. So left click and then bring it up here and then left click up here and then left click on the end point. Uh, okay, and hit escape. So we should be good on that one. Let's go ahead and move on to the rook. The same process as before, left click on the line, and then we want to go down, make sure that this is still lined up with everything else. It's, you can tell that it's definitely drifted off a little bit, but doesn't matter, we'll fix the proportions later a little bit. Um, so left click, bring it up to the center, left click and then hit escape and then we're going to go ahead and left click i'm going to keep tracing around the right side i don't know why i didn't like tracing on the left side um again just a preference thing but left click and then in here it looks like it's a three-point arc going to another three-point arc um but it's going to be kind of a harsh angle so we're going to kind of just do another line up and then uh, hit OK, and then I'll do a three-point arc from there just to kind of make them all a little bit unique. So start point and then end point and then somewhere in the middle. And then I'm going to do this one's kind of the same as that last one where there's like a line up and then another line up, but it's a, it's like three of them. Um, you know how we went one and then two for this one. We're going to go one, two, and then three. So we're gonna hit line, and then we're gonna go left click, and then line, uh, left click right there, and then we're gonna left click like right here, and you can kind of see it through here. I don't know if you can see what I'm looking at, but it's roughly the same little indentation spot as the other piece. Um, so about there, and then we'll go up to about here to where this this arc starts. Um, so that looks good, and it seems like it's not going to make a difference, but it will when we actually revolve it and the piece is actually made. I'm going to hit escape, and then we're going to go to arc. We're going to hit three-point arc, and start point, finish point, somewhere in the middle. Now with this one, you may be thinking, oh, the angle, blah, 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 blah. we can't break the angle. Um, but this piece is actually able to print from the top side. Uh, in you know flipping it upside down so we can kind of break the angle rule on this one a little bit if we want to or if you don't want to you can make it less of an angle and kind of change the shape but i like the way that this one's shaped so um you just do whatever you want uh you should have the hang of it for the most part and then we're going to use a line uh, i want to make this in line with the top so i didn't click just kind of drag that over left click and then left click to finish the shape uh so boom there we have the rook i'm going to hit uh, actually, I don't need to escape. We're going to go ahead and get started on the pawn. So we're going to have this. Don't click. Just have it in line. Drag over. And then we're going to left click. Bring it up. Um, that's not a good spot. So I hit escape. I added a little bit too far out. So I'm going to hit line. Do that again a little bit further to the left. And now one thing at this point, um, the picture has drifted a bit. So we're going to kind of freestyle this one a little bit um, more than the others. So let's just just so we get a good profile. So we're going to go out a little ways. Um, and I'm basically just going to kind of have everything shifted up a little bit since we're, you know, not towards the bottom and we want some cool features in there still still. So I'm going to left click and then I'm going to go up, left click, and then I say we do an angle. So let's do tab 135 and then left click and then we're going to go out here and you can see how it's like keeping it at 90 degrees so that'll keep our angles good too. So we're going to left click right there. Um, and then hit escape. So that looks pretty good. And then we'll just, we'll get this to swoop up and, um, go from there. So a three point arc, uh, right here and then left click on the start 
left click on the finish and then fit it to the shape. And then um, we will do another three point arc to finish it off. So left point here, left point there, or left click there, and then left click there. One thing you wanna be careful about when you're doing that last three point arc is you don't want it to go too high up. Um, like if you do start, finish, and then if you pull it out too far, you see up in the, you know, the very top center, it's gonna create a divot when we revolve it. So you wanna keep that, this angle right here, you know, below the horizontal. So um, that's it for tracing all the pieces. We've got pretty much the hard part completely out of the way. Um, so we'll go ahead and get into actually revolving and creating them. We're gonna hit finish sketch. And then um, we can actually go ahead and get rid of the, the canvas if we want. Um, now, next we are gonna go ahead and actually save. Um, oh, I actually didn't have this saved because I um, don't listen to my own advice. So new chest set one and then hit save. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to hit revolve. We're gonna left click revolve up here. And then the first thing it's prompting us to do, as you can see over here, is to select the profile. So we're gonna left click on this profile and then we're gonna hit the axis. Um, so we're going to choose the center axis. And then, um, so this is basing off of settings that I had before. It should be already automatically set to one side and 360 degrees for you. So this is what you should see, but these are the um, settings that you want. And then I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna actually change this to new component. Um, and then we're gonna hit okay. I'm not gonna go into components versus bodies in this video, but um, that's something you can either Google or I'll go into it in another video, but um, it does make a difference in the long run. So I like to make it into a component. Um, so let's keep moving and make the other pieces. One thing you'll notice is that the uh, sketch went away because we created the feature from it. So we're just gonna hit this drop down for sketches and then we're gonna make that sketch visible again. Um, and then we're gonna make the other pieces the same way. So we're gonna hit revolve and then we're just gonna left click on this profile. And then we're gonna go over left click for axis and then we're gonna left click this center profile for the axis. And then we're gonna choose new component and then we're gonna hit okay. Uh, and then we're gonna do it again. Revolve, left click, left click on axis, left click on that center line, left, and then left click, select new component, left click okay. I'm gonna skip this one right now for a second. Um, we're gonna do the last two. So revolve, left click on the profile, click axis, left click on the center line, and then click new component and hit okay. And then left click profile, left click axis, and then new component, hit okay. Now with this one, it's gonna be a little bit different because of the nature of the, the piece. Um, as you can see, this isn't gonna, we don't want this piece to revolve all the way around the, the same way as the other piece does. So um, it's just kind of a little bit of a trick we can do where we're gonna hit revolve and we're gonna revolve this first profile the same way that we've done everything else. Um, left click with this and then new component. And then um, one thing you wanna do really quick is we want to go ahead and select this component and activate it. So left click or you know, you hover your mouse over it and then click this circle that activates it. And then what we want to do is hit revolve and then select this profile. Now the thing is, is this is just kind of a little trick that's gonna create the shape that we want. I don't wanna go too in depth on like, you know, how, how I came up with it or what, anything like that, we're just gonna do it. So we select that profile and then for the axis, instead of selecting the center axis, we're gonna select this axis over here and then we're gonna change this to symmetric and we're gonna change this to about two degrees. Um, and that is going to create that kind of, that top piece in a similar you know, shape that we'd like it to be in. Um, and then we're gonna hit join and that's gonna join it to the already, com you know, the, the component that's already there. And then we're gonna click okay. And then um, what I like to do is just kind of clean it up a little bit and keep, you know, keep it rounded. Again, I don't want to go too in depth with this new command, but we're going to left click on fill it. And then we're going to choose um, some of these outer edges, basically just these two. And you're just going to left click them. So left click that, then I'm going to left click this edge. And then I'm going to left click this one, 
this one, and this one. And then I'm also going to left click this one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift, hold down my scroll wheel and rotate over, let go. And then I'm going to hold my scroll wheel and pan it over. Um, you could also just click up here, but I'm, I just kind of like, you know, I'd move quicker whenever I'm not doing a tutorial, I guess. And then I'm going to select these other edges. Um, make sure that I got everything selected that I want. And then it's only going to let us do a really, really small fillet, probably like 0.2. Um, let's try 0.3. You can kind of just keep trying higher and higher numbers, but eventually it's going to get, it's, things are going to be intersecting and it's not going to allow it. Um, but so far it's actually, being okay with it um so yeah i think 0.5 is okay that looks all right to me i'm actually gonna i want to select this edge too so i'm just gonna hold control and then select it left click it and then select and that kind of rounds that off a little bit that looks nice so then we're gonna go ahead and hit okay um, so that piece looks okay. I think that that one is all done and we're going to go ahead and activate this and it looks like everything is all done. I'm going to go ahead and hide this sketch. Um, and this is something that I'm pretty happy with. I, you know, I think, um, they should all 3d print really well. One thing that we can kind of do here too, to make this piece, um, nice is you can fill it these edges, um, to, to also round them, you know, punch in whatever, size you want um, but keep in mind with that one that you may end up wanting to print it upside down uh, just to deal with this uh, this fillet a little bit better um, but yeah that's pretty much it you know you can pretty much just feel free to get a little bit crazy with those profiles and, and do whatever you want with this um, type of design I may film another video on how to like edit these or you know modify them the easy way but real quick, I want to show you um, one quick trick just to kind of show them off in whatever color you want to print them in. Um, just hit A, and that'll bring up your appearances menu. Um, it should be opened up, but if it's not, hit that plus sign. I'm going to drag it up a little bit. And then there's this menu that you'll see with all these different materials. I like to open up the plastic menu. Um, and then for a I just choose ABS and then edit it afterwards just because... So I'm going to drag this onto um, one of my pieces and then I'm going to go up here, right click and then edit. And then I'm going to change it. I don't know. I'm just going to make the pieces black, I guess. Um, and then I'm going to left click and drag this down to a darker color and then hit done. And then I'm just going to drag this onto these other pieces. Um, but say you wanted to have some white, some black or whatever, you know, you can just duplicate this or right click duplicate and then right click edit change this back to white um, hit done and then have those two colors so that's kind of a, a real quick briefing on how to do how to change appearances um, and then what's next oh yeah i wanted to show you how to export it for 3d print so i'm going to get rid of this uh, appearances menu and then there's a couple different ways you can export if you wanted to export everything all in one file and print them all at once then um, you would just go up here, left click file, and then hit export. And then what you would do is select STL from the drop down and choose where you want it to save. And then you would hit export. But you wouldn't want to do that for this scenario. Um, I don't know why I showed you it first, but that would that wouldn't allow you to print these separately. And obviously for a chess piece, you want to be able to multiply and do separate pieces. So here's how you're going to want to export these pieces. Um, real simple. You're just going to go over to component right click and hit save as STL before that you might want to save them. So I'm going to left click and just name them. Um, that way I don't have to rename them whenever I am saving them. So King, Queen, Bishop, Rook, Pawn, Knight, and then, okay, so back to it. You just right click and then hit save as STL. And then you're gonna get over here. Yeah, you don't really have to change any of the settings. You might be able to change this to high if you want. I don't really ever mess with that. And then hit okay. And then it's gonna ask you where you wanna save it. So you're just gonna um, click save and then boom, you've got your STL file of your brand new chess set. 
and you are all good to 3D print them. They should be oriented to import in your slicer correctly. Um, so yeah, that's it. I hope you found this tutorial useful. I hope this technique of you know tracing half a profile and revolving um, is useful to you for other things. Like I said, I might film, I, I, I'm definitely gonna film another video just creating one of these pieces really quickly. Um, that way you can reference that. But um, please feel free to subscribe, like the video, comment, let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you do have experience with Fusion 360, let me know if there's anything that you saw, or I mean, if there's anything you saw that um, could be done more efficiently, I, I do know that because this is just a beginner tutorial. And like I said, I didn't worry about constraints and all that stuff. Um, but I will go into that in the future videos. So um, comment below some things that you also might like to see me model or like a tutorial um, on how to model for yourself. Um, thanks again for watching.